Blessings. Blessings. L- love is all around us. Yeah, so like nice national parks, clean air, guys, clean water. Notice how it just really diminishes the citizen. Clean streets, safe streets, safe cities, safe neighborhoods, super predators locked up in prison. When I, I paint that, that picture for you, that you could walk anywhere, any American city, and feel safe. You could go anywhere in America and be safe, have abundant public facilities. You could go to a public restroom where they didn't use the cheap toilet paper, all right, where you had cleaner air and cleaner water. When I just think about that, I feel so diminished because big government, it, it lies, it bites. It bleeds. It screams. It will drive you to your knees. I mean, think about this poor Scandinavians. Think about the oppressed people in Finland, Norway, Sweden. Right? Think about the Scandinavians and how diminished their life has been having cradle-to-grave welfare, abundant public facilities, uh, free health care, free public education. I mean... Think about how small they are. Think about how tiny they are. Think think about all the opportunities for growth that they missed out on because they didn't get to breathe as much toxic air. They didn't get to breathe as much polluted, inhale as much polluted water. That they, you know, they could just walk anywhere they wanted and it was safe and clean. My God. That, that big government there in Scandinavia just incredibly, incredibly diminished them. And because I'm more spiritual than you are, when I look at Scandinavia, I see dead people. Hey, big government, it bites, guys. It bleeds, it will drive you to your knees. I mean, you may think Fox News is fun, right? You may think, oh, 40, uh, play some Fox News. It's just so much fun i mean look how much fun they are and i enjoy fox news right good times happy times joyous times that we've shared together like a bunch of patriots but there are a lot of fun girls with incurable anal warts now there are a lot of really fun laughing happy loose women with sexually transmitted diseases and so fox effed around and got caught and now they have to pay $787 million. I mean, just imagine you make one bad decision, and then for the rest of your life, you have incurable anal warts. I mean, do you really want to go to synagogue and be known as the guy with the incurable anal warts just because you made you know, one mistake you know, one time with a transvestite in, in Brazil, and now you've got incurable anal warts? Right? So, yeah, Fox is fun. There are a lot of fun girls out there. But they may have incurable anal warts. And Fox has got apparently incurable anal warts, and they're going to try to pay $787 million. But the anal warts are still there, right? So, when this is an example of the spiritual progress I'm making, this is why I'm so much better than you. And this is why I can see crematoria and you can't. This is why I can see civil war and you can't. Yes, I broke the Sasha Gray incurable anal ward story. And did I win any journalistic awards? No. Did uh, the Columbia Journalism Review like invite me in to to lecture? Was there even an item about me in the Columbia Journalism Review? Uh, Did the New York Times acknowledge what I'd done? Did uh, President Bush call me, you know, one of his thousand points of light? Nothing. No. No awards. No prestige. No status. uh, No movie deals. I just did it because I'm a truth teller. And and that's okay. I don't need glory. (laughs) Luke Cross says, I broke the Millennial Wars General Award story. But you didn't do it for the glory. You did it for the truth, man. We, we believe in transcendent values of truth. So this is an example of how much more spiritual I am than you are. This is an example of how much more morally elevated I am than you are. So 
when I used to drive around Los Angeles, I would kind of think about different streets, different neighborhoods, and, and remember the erotic times that I had there. It's like, oh, I went for a first date here, and oh, just up this street, I did these things that are illegal in a lot of states. But I don't do that anymore because I am a spiritual giant. I see dead people. Now, when I drive around Los Angeles, I think about the amazing Torah that I learned, or I think about the mitzvahs that I did, or I think about the acts of loving kindness that I did, or the people that I 12-stepped, or the people that I 13-stepped, right? I, I now resonate. I am now vibrating on that spiritual level where I'm able to see dead people and civil wars and crematoria and Gog and Magog and demons and devils and angels and I'm just a vessel for God, right? That's the kind of level that I'm vibrating at right now. I mean, I think you can tell how my aura has just become so much more clean. It, it, there's no longer any brown in my aura. H have you noticed the, the complete removal of the color brown from my aura? And, and that's just happened in the last month. And I'm, I'm not one to boast about that because I'm just a vessel. So Donald Trump should have put Stormy in his beauty pageants. Think about how much aggro he could have saved. Oh, and I was just remembering after the 2020 election, like J.F. P. that night after night was echoing all the nonsense that Fox News was echoing about uh, who was that ridiculous Trump lawyer who was releasing the Kraken. Right? That was uh, a prime focus of you know J J.F. P.'s show and uh, Baked Alaska, Nick Fuentes, they were all in with... You know, Ali Alexander and the other groomers, you know, stop the steal, giving people what they want. But was I standing here giving you what you want? No. I said, screw what you want. You're an inferior human being. I see dead people and you don't. So who cares what you want? I see civil wars and you don't. I see crematoria and you don't. So... Uh, one thing about the Stormy Daniels story that uh, illustrates something I often said about porn stars. So porn stars are hookers, but they are a particular type of hooker. Porn stars are hookers without shame. So most hookers would feel shame going public with their hooking. So most hookers you know, would not go public about their clients. But porn stars are hookers without shame, and so they don't have the same trepidation about naming and shaming their clients. So Stormy Daniels is a hooker without shame. So a normal hooker would not name Donald Trump, but porn stars are hookers without shame. So Aaron Sorkin, the creator of The West Wing, big uh, patronizer of hookers, and he made a movie, all right, uh, about uh, someone operating this, uh, you know, illegal poker game. All right, it's called Molly's Game 2017. So this woman operated an illegal poker tournament until she got busted. But you know what made her the hero of this movie? That she didn't sell out her clients. It's like, oh, wow, that's heroic. You're engaging in illegal behavior, but you're refusing to name the other people participating in your illegal behavior. So you're the hero because Aaron Sorkin has been burned by so many hookers who he patronized and promised things to, and then they felt betrayed by him and you know, spilled the dirty on him. So I don't have a, like a big agenda, like, you know, whether the hooker should keep quiet or whether the hooker should open her mouth. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to judge the, the hookers with, with shame or the hookers without shame. I just thought it was ridiculous that Aaron Sorkin makes this 2017 movie, which is, you know, fun watch, compelling. But the whole point, the upshot of the movie, the moral message of the movie is how awesome it is when you engage in illegal behavior but you don't turn on richer and more powerful people than yourself like Aaron Sorkin. I mean, what a sadic, what a, what a truly righteous man. I mean, what can we all learn from Stormy Daniels? Like, what can we learn? Stormy Daniels story. The long afterlife of a forgettable fling with a reality television personality. Written by Olivia Newsy for New York Magazine. Narrated by Jamie Lamchick. Please be advised, this article contains adult language, including topics that may not be suitable for children. Stormy Daniels saged the room and shuffled the Oracle deck. 
It was the evening of April 1st, and the woman at the center of the legal drama that led to the first criminal indictment of a U.S. president had agreed to ask the guides for help to see more clearly the past, the present, and what she calls the potential or likely outcome. Daniels doesn't claim to be a fortune teller. Nobody can predict the future, she said. We all have free will. But she can, for sure, identify fortune's fool. She raised her hands and pressed the empty space between her palms. She spoke quietly. What can you tell Olivia about Donald Trump? She waited for a moment. Nothing. What the fuck, she said. That's weird. She was having trouble connecting to the realm of the spirits. She shuffled the deck again. There. Between her palms, the force field of energy swelled. She dealt the cards. As if by magic, the room shifted. My ears began to ring. Tension spread across my forehead. My eyes filled with tears. I looked across the table and met the dealer's gaze. She was crying too. The cards confirmed what she already knew. She looked down. First, she saw the past. This is the unity card, she said. It's normally a very beautiful card. It means that everything is connected. But not today. When the card landed on the table, it was upside down. Reversed, it means everything is coming apart. Next, she saw the present. This is current energy, she said. She motioned to two cards, each decorated with a cloaked figure. We have double death. She paused to explain. Death is not dead. It is the natural ending of something. Sometimes when it's right side up, it can be kind of a good thing. This, two death cards, one inverted, was not that. She read the text that accompanied the cards. Reverse meaning is, important change is being blocked or delayed, but cannot necessarily be stopped. By clinging to old habits or things that were once true, something difficult is about to be forced upon us. We must release these outgrown or outworn ways of thinking to move forward to the next stage. It is important to look to the future, however unknown or frightening, rather than to try to target the past. You must dig deep and stop holding on to the untruths that have been spoon-fed to you. There will be pain in this process, but hopefully a step forward into the future. She arched an eyebrow. Are you surprised? Next, she saw the future. Have you ever watched Harry Potter? She asked. This is the golden snitch. It is chaos. Fucking chaos. Energetic chaos. This is the outcome. Shit going crazy. Potential for good, but needs to be harnessed. She read again from the book. It is ungrounded energy, and it is not meant to be. Humans need to keep their feet firmly on Earth. If you encounter the RAR, breathe slowly. Center and ground yourself. Be clear about objectives before chaos ensues. This one is terrifying because of who it is. It's for Trump, but let's face it, it's kind of for everybody. His fate, she believed, would determine ours. I was bewildered by the wave of emotion that seemed to wash over both of us at once. Why did we cry? Because... Why do we cry? I mean, Stormy is trying to warn us, guys. Stormy is the only thing between us and fascism. Uh, are we are we willing to listen to Stormy's wisdom, or are we going to deny Stormy yet again? Right? Will Will you reject Stormy? She's trying to save you. Are you going to deny Stormy yet again in your sinful unbelief? I sure hope not. Daniel she says suffered. she received a call from In Touch Weekly, which was considering publishing her story. In her book, she recounts contacting a publicist named Gina Rodriguez, who said she believed the tabloid had been informed by Daniels' ex-husband, Mike Moss. Rodriguez laid out a case for cooperating. If she refused to talk, Daniels would be putting herself in a lose-lose situation. Not only would the secret be out, but it would be on her ex's terms, and likely for his financial benefit. However, if she worked with the magazine, she could exert some control, and she would get paid. She recalled Rodriguez asking her, do you really want to hand him 15 grand? 
Daniels submitted to an interview and to a subsequent lie detector test, which she passed. It was around this time that Daniels says she was first threatened. In a parking lot in Las Vegas, retrieving her baby... Just imagine being a sex worker is dangerous. Like That just blows my mind. I, I never thought that someone doing what they love, you know, sex work, I, I never thought that that could possibly be dangerous or, you know, revealing uh, intimate details of, of uh, sex with, you know, a powerful figure. Who ever thought that that could come with some dangerous complications? I mean, I thought sex sex work was just all fun and fluff and and love and kindness and goodness and now now i'm listening to this article and i'm finding out that that sex work and you know revealing intimate details about sex you've had with powerful famous people that, that it comes with some downsides this is just totally blowing my mind guys why didn't we listen to stormy daniel she's the only thing standing between us and fascism daughter from her car seat on their way to a mommy and me class a man came up behind her beautiful little girl you got there he said she figured he was lost she was going to offer to help him find where he was going instead he said it'd really be a shame if something happened to her mom he was staring at the child for yeah and stormy daniels is the first public figure who's taken some controversial actions, and there was blowback. Can you believe that? There were negative repercussions to becoming a public figure as a prostitute who had sex with a powerful man, and then you try to leverage that for, for money and fame. I mean, she just wants to do work that she loves, making pornography and, and being a stripper and a, and a hawker. But now now she finds that there's downsides to being a, a public figure who would have thought that if you are controversial that if you tick off a lot of people if you threaten powerful people if you reveal things that most people would want to keep silent who would have ever considered that there might possibly be be downsides to this this is just blowing my mind isn't this the first time that any public figure has received negative repercussions for things, for stories that they've put out to the, to the public, that they've sold to the public? This is amazing and so sad. I had no idea that if you, you know, engage in public controversy, that there can possibly be a downside. I just thought that everything would be sweetness and light. Forget the story. Leave me. Whoa. Mr. Trump alone. She would have no choice but to oblige. I had no idea that if you hurt people, if you damage people, if you bothered people, if you you know threaten to derail their political campaign or any dream or project that they're on, that there, that might be blowback, that there might be some opposition. Who knew that some people would be unhappy if you you know tried to destroy what they're working on? I had no idea until. This excellent article by Olivia Nuzzi in New York Magazine, the Stormy Daniels story. So important. So important. In touch went dark. A few months later, the story cropped up again. Someone had told a gossip blog, The Dirty, about the relationship. Daniels isn't sure who that someone was, though she has theories. The blog attributed the source to a friend. Rodriguez introduced Daniels to a lawyer, Keith Davidson, who she said could help. This is pretty shocking. Just imagine you're a sex worker, you're, you're a prostitute, you're a stripper, you're a porn star, you're a porn director, and not all of your friends turn out to be of sterling character. I mean, this just blows me away. Who would have thought that uh, being in the sex industry might uh, predispose you to dealing with an inferior quality of people. This is blowing my mind. Within a few hours, the item had been taken offline. Daniels didn't know who Davidson was, nor that his specialty was brokering sex tapes and the like. She was just grateful to avoid humiliation. She didn't know anything, right? She's just a total innocent babe, right? She just loved to do work that she loved. She just loved being a prostitute and a stripper and a pornographer. And I mean, how was she to know that this guy was brokering 
sex tapes. She just simply wanted to get paid money for her story. And just, <laughs> this is just so sad. And she's the only thing standing between us and fascism. She didn't want the world, especially not her then husband, Glendon Crane, to know about what had happened in Tahoe or in the months that followed. Uh, who, who, who could imagine that when you're a professional sex worker, that uh, maybe the, the husbands that you pick, I think she's on husband number four by now, but uh, apparently being a professional sex worker is not really great for lasting long-term healthy relationships. It's not really a really solid foundation for marriage. I mean, this blows me away. I thought that active prostitutes and active porn stars and strippers, I would, I would think they'd just make the best, most stable families and that only the best, the creme de la creme, the elite, the finest, the people of sterling moral character would, would marry them. And now it sounds like you're just dealing with a bunch of dysfunctional, antisocial creeps and weirdos when you're a sex worker. Blows my mind, guys. And for a little while longer, at least, it seemed no one would. I let it go, she said, content to let Donald Trump recede into the past. The past caught up with her again in 2016. The closer Trump got to the White House, the more Daniels feared for her life. Going public, she came to believe, would protect her and her family. Just imagine that there's a downside to being a sex worker. I mean, this just blows away. Just imagine that there's a downside to revealing intimate moments that normal human beings, you know, would keep quiet. Just imagine there's a downside when you escape from normal moral boundaries. I can't believe that there's a downside when you consistently engage in, you know, antisocial behavior. I can't believe there's a downside when you choose to live and to work on the dark side and that this comes with negative repercussions. I, I, I can't believe that being a, a hooker without shame might, might come with a downside and might you know, predispose you to some dangers. Who knew that sex work could predispose a woman to some unsavory characters? Blows my mind. At least if something tragic happened, a single car crash, an overdose, a gas leak explosion, there would be a record of her accusations. There would be cause for suspicions. Without that, it would be much easier for a woman perceived as a potential optics problem for a potential president to just up and disappear. Daniels made plans to tell her story on Good Morning America. She was on set directing a film when Rodriguez called to say she had to see her and it was urgent. When she arrived... She was just directing a film, a nice, wholesome, suck and puck film. You know, just a nice, hardcore pornography film. Like, just the most innocent activity. Like, she's just doing what she loves. Bloody hell. And, and then everything starts falling apart for no reason. Right? There's nothing that she did wrong. This, this kills me. Come on. ...accompanied by Davidson, Daniels was offered paperwork. The Trump campaign was prepared to pay her $130,000 to remain silent. The world has interpreted the fact of the so-called hush money agreement through Trump's perspective. He was the one with something obvious to lose. He was the one on his way to the presidency, already hobbled by then by the Access Hollywood tape and a rolling series of allegations of sexual harassment and assault. But the deal was not just financially advantageous for Daniels. It was exactly what she had always wanted. To protect herself, protect her daughter, and shield her husband, who struggled with his mental health, from the truth. I felt like this was a win, she would later write. Got to stay in my home with my daughter and do the work that I love. I won't be defined by Don. She just wanted to stay home, be with her daughter, do the work that she loved, and and, and she just wanted you know some help for her husband, hu husband number three, or husband number four, and his mental health problems. I mean, she tried to warn us, guys, and right now she is the only thing that is protecting our republic from a fascist takeover. Are we listening? 
Are we listening to the, the message that Stormy Daniels has for us? I sure hope so. This is breaking my hey, heart. Mate 40 here. So I've interviewed thousands of people in my life. And one thing I noticed is that everybody hurts. Like everybody is sensitive to slights. Everybody feels pain when that which they love and value is diminished. So if you love your kids, you're dramatically increasing your vulnerability in life. Because if, if a girl breaks up with your son, right, you feel bad. If your daughter gets fired, you feel bad. If your kid struggles in a class or is bullied, you feel bad. If your kid falls down and bloody sees me, normally you feel bad. Now, my dad somehow, he didn't feel bad if I fall down and bloody my knee. He'd like yank me up by the arm and announce to everybody around me, he's fine, he's fine. But that's because my father loved things more than his kids, such as his public standing and his reputation. And so it was important to him that we didn't show pain and that we were resilient and that we were masters over our feelings. But if you love the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to feel pain when the Cowboys lose. Like if you love your car, you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel pain when it gets scratched. Like if you love your garden, right, and gets damaged by a storm, you're going to feel bad. Like everybody hurts. Everybody cries sometime. <laughs> so when I think about my dad, who'd always proclaim and, and uh, people around him, his supporters would back him up. It's, uh, you know, all criticism would just flow off him like water off a duck's back. Or you hear Dennis Prager and, and Julie Hartman, his YouTube co-host, talking about, oh, you know, criticism doesn't bother Dennis. I don't let it bother me, says Dennis. It does. Like you can viscerally see it bothering him when he's getting more of it, depending who it's from. If it's from uh, people within the Jewish community, of course, that hurts more than people in an out group. I remember when a variety of uh, conservative rabbis signed a letter condemning Dennis Prager for his stand against same-sex marriage and I think calling him homophobic. And like, that really hurt Dennis. Uh, you could see like, the pain when he came to shore that, that, that Sabbath. He was rocked. And guess what? Dennis's best friends, uh, they felt the pain and they were indignant on his behalf and they were outraged. So we all have things that we invest in outside of ourselves. And when those things, you know, they become part of our hero system, normally that's part of our community. So if you're part of the Armenian community and the Armenian community, you know, suffers a loss, you hurt. If you're an Orthodox Jew and you think, you know, Orthodox Jews are the greatest and you see you know, a bunch of Orthodox Jews convicted for some white-collar crime or there's you know, some legal setbacks against Orthodox Jews, say, in Israel, or there's some change in the economy and some segment of Orthodox Jewry is really struggling, like, you feel pain if there's... A yeah, everybody hurts. Everybody cries. All right, uh, Art Bell comments. We hope for some singing here. We've got a title of a video matching an REM song. I, I missed this. Uh, Breitbart website had early on one ex-government official claiming that the young kid who leaked hundreds of pages of military intelligence needed someone much more senior than him to get access. Thus, this whole thing was a government operation, maybe to pass a draconian proposed bill to tame the internet. Maybe the kid's IT position would allow him access to all that info. Zero Hedge reports that 1.25 million Americans have top secret access. Crowdsource Truth has some ancient intelligence workers who say impossible for a young guy to get this info. And Art Bell says in the Jerusalem Post, God forbid, Israeli father daughter arrested for trying to pimp out Ukrainian women. The arrest was the culmination of a four-month investigation by Israeli police regarding Israelis bringing Ukrainian women to Israel to exploit them and to make them work as prostitutes. So I remember I visited the Mount of Olives and uh, Gethsemane when I was in Israel in 2000, and I, I wanted to see the the grave, some of the graves there. And this very nice uh, Arab man offered to you know show me various graves for a generous tip, and then he even promised to take me to a brothel where there was some inexpensive but beautiful Ukrainian women. And I declined. I have never, never, you know, paid money for the, the services of a prostitute. A, a put down of like traditional Orthodox practices or ways of organizing community, the Orthodox way of life, the divine nature of the origins of uh, the Torah and the whole Orthodox Jewish tradition, like any put downs, any criticisms, any cuts or slights to that, you feel pain. If you're a fair income Christian, you believe that Jesus Christ is the only path to salvation, any claim to the contrary, that's going to cause you viscerally pain. Wow, isn't this beautiful? We've got We've got these, you know, flowers. Spring has sprung, bro. And, and these flowers are just descending upon me. So th this is just pure delusion, right? That you can love and be invested in things and have a hero system and then not hurt. So California, if, if you get most of your sense of community from being a Californian, right? If uh, much of California falls off the map because of an earthquake or is damaged by floods or fires or droughts or the economy in California turns down or it develops in a very nasty budget deficit, right? You're gonna feel pain. If you believe that marriage is a heterosexual institution, and you have to encounter same-sex marriage, whether it's on the news or in person, 
you're going to feel pain if you believe that the United States military should be a heterosexual institution. You're going to feel pain at the inclusion of LGBTQ. Right? If uh, you believe that God's greatest revelation to humanity is the Seventh-day Adventist Church or the, you know, the, the truth as articulated to the Prophet Muhammad or the Mormon Church, like any detriments, any put-downs, any suffering by these entities in which you invest yourself, you're going to feel pain. If you love your motorbike, your motorbike gets dented or it stops working as well as you'd like, you're going to feel pain. Like if you love a tree. Right. Everybody hurts. Everybody cries. Right. So people think, oh, you know, criticism doesn't bother me. It's just like uh, water off a, a duck's back. It's a lie. Right. When, when my viewers go from 20 to 15, it hurts. It's like little pinpricks as my viewership drops. I mean, the day is long when you're a live streamer. You think, oh, the night, it's mine alone. Just, it's just me and my audience here, right? Or what could, what could possibly go wrong? Well, sometimes you have enough, but you got to hang on, guys. Don't let yourself go. Why? Because everybody cries. Everybody hurts sometimes, right? When things don't go your way, right? Criticism hurts. We're all vulnerable. Sometimes everything is wrong. Now it's time to sing along. Sometime everything is wrong. Now it's time to sing along. When your day is night alone, hold on, hold on. If you feel like letting go, hold on. If you think you've had too much of this life, well, hang on, because everybody hurts. Take comfort in your friends, your family, your community, your intellectual pursuits of this life, well, hang on. Because everybody hurts. Everybody cries. Bye-bye.